wanted to add all these elevations as individual views, we can do that by going here. So let's go back to the Welcome Center. Now let's look up elevation here. And if we just click that, it's going to make whatever the last type of elevation we did was. But if you click the drop down, you'll see that you have elevations or framing elevation. So if you click standard elevation, see how it's a square? Oh, you just double click another view, like floor plan or something. Yeah. It's just a view like any other view. Um, so if you look, the default elevation is square. So this is an entire building elevation. What we want is an interior elevation. So if you go to the type and you click down here, you also have interior elevations. And now when you move, you'll see it's a bubble. So the bubble signifies... Yep. So the bubble signifies that you're doing an interior elevation. So if we drop this in, and you can see as you move it closer to the walls, it points at a different wall. So let's point it here towards this wall, and you can click in there. And then now, if you select, so it's kind of tricky because they have everything overlapping, but if you tab over to that bubble, and we get the elevation, you also have... There. So I've clicked it now. You can see there's elevation 1A. And all the other ones don't have a solid black little arrow. They have like a outline. If you click these checks, it's going to create all of those views as well. So if you look down in elevations, we've got, but now it's, it's a, gone and done these little brackets here, the parentheses, and it says building elevations, and there's a new category called interior elevations. And as I click on more of these elevations, there, another one popped up. Now, if you watch here, you'll get D. And now I can go to these. So let's look at the first one we made. There's that elevation. Add what? Right, so select that bubble. Just select it. Yep. And they should all be like outlines. So click on the actual circle. Like off to one side on the circle. There. There you go. So see there's this check mark you can check. It's that little checkbox there. And then once you check it, it will fill it in black. So let's say you had one where you only wanted to elevate two sides. You just click check, check, and then it makes them. So, and if you remember on our other one, we had um, go back. So here, the reason this is so um, big is because of the drawing scale. So when you change scale of your drawing, like I'm not going to do it now because it's going to mess this one up, but it, it looks like nothing really changed, but your, your text and all of your like annotations will change size. And that's actually because the building is growing and shrinking and the text is staying the same size. So if you click this and I go to like a way different scale, oh, it's not letting me because I have a view template. So if you change the scale here, let's just say we put this one. Notice how big all those got. So you'll immediately realize, like, whoa, that's way too like crazy. And that's usually it's not the fault of the annotation; it's the scale of the drawing. And here for like another extreme, it's really tiny. And so you can. Oh, no, go ahead. Well, so I mean, you were. I'll let you finish before I ask. No, you can ask it. Well, so my thing would be, you know, normally you would let these sit on the floor plans. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they, so you would have to go in how to make them that size, right? Even if your plan is the right scale. Right. So if let's say, so that's where you have to start making. Remember, only a view can only go on one sheet. Right. You'll start having multiple versions of like these. 
So just like you would typically have like a framing plan, like a dimension plan, and then like like interior finish plan, like you'd have all the different plans. You can right click this and say duplicate view, and now you have three options. Right. If you just purely duplicate, it's going to just copy it. Right. And then when you go to the other view, none of these annotations will be there. Mm -hmm. Or anything that you add on top, it's not going to be there. But see, if you do with detailing, that will bring those all over. Okay. And then if you make it dependent, as you change the initial one, it'll update the other one. So that's how you can get around that where you have different scales. Okay. And because obviously you wouldn't want this huge. Right. And that yeah, way well, you can actually display like a nice clean like presentation nice. plan and then the other one with all the Dimension. like dimensions and wall tags and everything that you need. Because those will need to be at different scales. Right. So if not, you would never be able to get like the whole drawing set done. Okay, so that's that would be my concern. Mm -hmm. first, my first thought was I have to not make this not visible. That's crazy. Right. That's not good. Mm -hmm. all right, so I'll duplicate the eight times. Yeah, and it doesn't matter what view it came from, it will still create a new view, and it's referencing the model. Does that make sense? So that elevation will still be that interior elevation, regardless of where it's visible or not. Because the annotation is separate from the physical it's model. Kind of a, it's awesome. Right. And if you wanted to, you could have it so that in your standard ground floor plan, those are checked off by category. And then in this other one, turned on. Right. And because your scale's different because you don't have all the stuff that needs to show up mm -hmm. bigger on the page. Yep. Right. So the other option you can do this at a different scale and then you do a call out like this of just this room. Yes. And then we can move the tag, the bubble over to this side. And then now you can go to ground call out here and see it's at a different scale. And then here we could even just say, like, either turn it off using the view template or you can tab over to this. Yeah, see, you're getting the hang of it. Grab it. Do we need to rename the elevation? It will do that automatically once you start making it. And then notice, right now it's, it has like an empty space in the middle. Man, I can't grab it. When all else fails, you use the filter. Ah, you missed the first step. So when you click elevation, yeah. by default, this is set to building elevation. Uh -huh. So if it looks like that, like a house, that's the whole building. So that's for the outside. So if you remember when we first opened Revit the very first day, the only thing we had was four of these. Remember, if you zoom yeah. out, yeah. there was one here, one there, one here, and one there. That's what those are. They're just elevation little tags. Are we using those for the for the elevation? Yeah. So the other way you can do it, which is probably the better way, if you want to have this template on this one, you can go annotation overrides, and then we can say. Elevations. I wonder if interior elevation is different. No. <coughs> there you go. See, I just hit it. And then what? It's four things. Right. When you check all four boxes, mm -hmm. it's four things. Yep. So here we have this guy, and notice that this blow up 
is it just has this bubble and then on we can make a sheet for that's what I wanted to do I forgot to update because um, that is a lot more useful when we make this all as part of one sheet so or did I put it in there no it just says that so we can make a new sheet this one a501 and then we've got this guy we can drop on here and now that I've dropped that on here if we go back to ground you'll see it's it has the call out of what sheet it's on so as you look at this drawing you'll see that the welcome center in its entirety and this call out is on is drawing number one on a501 so remember when we were doing that treasure hunt at the beginning of the semester where you had to find all this information? Yeah. Those little tags, that's how they get created using Revit. You just start linking them all together. And what's neat... Should be the name of the sheet? Which sheet? Five. If that's this one, you yeah. can call it... Um, this can be... Oops, let me go to the sheet. You can call this one enlarged plans and elevations. Or welcome center plan and elevations. It's really up to you. And then we can grab all those little elevations, the interior ones. Here I can activate this one. What's wrong? Well, I created a duplicate as independent. Independent only, I changed the scale. Then you went back. Then I went back to the full plan, and it's all kind of whack. Mm hmm. Where's my crop while that's out? Yeah, because that way they break that relationship. So here we can do that. We can right click this if you don't want to see that and hide in view. You can call it Welcome Center. So notice here I have to do the same thing that I had done on this one. Hide all these different things and everything. So the best thing to do would be save, do this one all the way. Get that one to look exactly the right way. So if you wanted to override any graphics, go ahead and do them. And then when you're done, what would you think? The yep. So then here you would go view template, create template from current view, and call this one interior elevation 
We can call it one. And there it is. So you can say OK. And then on this view, we can apply it. And we can back out. And then this one, all you have to do is apply <coughs> out the same interior elevation and see everything else disappeared. Then you can crop the view back down. Oops. When you're done with that, can you show us how to move the active call-outs for the elevation?